So in this video, we're gonna talk about using trig or trigonometry to find the missing sides of a right triangle, especially when Pythagorean theorem doesn't work. Just wanna remind you, trig really just has to do with ratios of right triangles. If we're looking at this angle here, and this symbol, remember, means theta, it's just a missing variable, kind of like x. If we're looking at this angle, that's the hypotenuse of the triangle because it's across from the right angle. This is the opposite side because it's across the triangle from, from that angle. And this is the adjacent side because it's right next to the angle, touching the angle. And then when we compare different ratios, we just give them names. So opposite over hypotenuse is sine. Adjacent over hypotenuse, we named cosine. And then opposite over adjacent is named tangent. Um, you can remember this by so ka toa, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. All right, um, so clear that out. I'm just gonna go through a few examples of how to use this to find some missing sides. So for example, if I want to find this missing side here, it might be tempting to say, oh, I can use Pythagorean theorem because it's a right triangle. But to use Pythagorean theorem, I would have to say, okay, this squared plus this squared equals this squared, and I'm gonna have two different variables there, and I wouldn't be able to solve for either of them. So instead, what I can use is trig, trigonometry. So I've got this angle right here, 50 degrees. And I'm trying to find this side, and I already have this side. So compared to 50 degrees, that is the opposite side. Uh, this is the adjacent side, but it doesn't really matter because I'm not trying to solve for that one. And this is the hypotenuse. So which of the three trig functions, so, so uh, which of these three has to do with the opposite side and the hypotenuse? That would be this one, opposite over hypotenuse sine. So what I'm gonna say is the sine of this angle, in this case it's 50 degrees, oops, 50 degrees, equals opposite over hypotenuse. I'm gonna call this x instead of question mark. So it equals x over six. Um, remember, sine has to be attached to something. It doesn't just exist on its own. So it has to be the sine of angle B. In this case, that's 50 degrees. So the sine of 50 degrees equals the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And now I can solve for x. You can go ahead and put this in your calculator if you want, or just go ahead and solve for x. Multiply by 6 on both sides, and there we have it. So x equals this. I'm going to type all that in my calculator. So 6 times the sine of 50 degrees. And I got 4.596, I'm gonna round it there. So that's the missing side, and that makes sense. This looks like it's about 4.6. Um, note in your calculator, don't forget you need to be in degree mode. The mode button is right at the top here, and it's on the third line down. You need to not be in radians, be in degree mode. Or if you type this into Google, you literally type 50 degrees, the word degrees. Okay, let's try another one. On this one, I'm given a 55 degree angle. The side, this side is four, and I'm trying to find the hypotenuse. So I wanna know the hypotenuse, I have the adjacent side, because compared to this 55 degrees, this is the adjacent side. Um, and so which of the three trig functions has to do with adjacent and hypotenuse? That would be ka, cosine. So I'll say the cosine of 55 degrees equals, and you can put parentheses around that or not, it doesn't matter. Cosine of 55 degrees equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so 4 over x. Now I need to solve for x, and you can, again, you can go ahead and get this decimal if you want. I'm just going to wait till the end. You can go ahead and solve, uh, well, I need to solve for x. 
The problem is it's on the bottom of a fraction. So there's two ways you could handle this. One would be put this over a one and cross multiply. Or I want x to not be on the bottom of a fraction. So what I could do is actually multiply both sides by x so that it's no longer on the bottom, now it's on the top, it just moved over here. So now it's in the numerator. So now I've got x times the cosine of 55 degrees equals four. Now to solve for x, since these are being multiplied, I'm just going to divide by the cosine of 55 degrees. Remember, those are attached. Don't just divide by cosine, just like if I had x times the square root of 55 equals 4. It wouldn't make sense to like divide by the square root. The square root doesn't exist without whatever's in it. Same thing with trig functions. They have to leach onto whatever they're with. So I'm going to divide by cosine of 55. That's all one thing. And also divide this side by cosine of 55 degrees. Sorry, those look like s's. And now I have x by itself. It equals this. Again, just type it into your calculator. 4 divided by cosine of 55 degrees, and I got 6.97. That's again rounded. Uh, does that make sense? Yes. That the hypotenuse would be bigger than the leg. That makes sense. Let's try another one. We got triangle dog here, D O G. Again, I can't use Pythagorean theorem because I only have one side. So we're going to have to use a trig ratio. It gave me an angle, so I'll be able to do that. Uh, I just need to know which of the three trig ratios to use. Uh, this is the hypotenuse, so I need to have something to do with the hypotenuse. This is the adjacent side because it touches it. And this is the opposite side. So which of the trig ratios has to do with opposite and hypotenuse? That would be so, so sine. So I'm going to set up my equation, the sine of 72 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse, 8.2 over x, or question mark. This is another one where the variable's on the bottom. So you could put that over a one and cross multiply, or do what we did last time and multiply by x so that it's no longer in the denominator, it's in the numerator. Now I've got x times the sine of 72 degrees equals 8.2. And then to get x by itself, just divide by sine of 72 degrees. Type this into a calculator. So 8.2 divided by sine of 72. And so x equals 8.62 approximately. Again, that's rounded. Uh, that makes sense to have the hypotenuse a little bigger than that leg. Just one final refresher on sine, cosine, and tangent if you need it. And that's all for this lesson.